Chatter among the people is a time of storytelling. In the warmth of their homes, they gather around the fire and tell stories of the past and the future. Stories of the people, of the elders and animals, stories of the world. Everybody has a story to tell, even those who are usually silent, too shy or too humble will speak and everybody listens, especially the children. And that is how we uh, came into this world. How the people first came from clamshells. We came from clamshells? Well, not you children, but, but yes, your parents and I, we came from shells. Really? Clamshells? Yes. Giant clamshells that we... Right, Dad. Like I believe that. We lived in. Uh, and... You have to do better than that. Clamshells? Pfft. Huh. Tough audience, huh? So tough. Don't believe anything I say. I know. Kids these days. I also have no more stories to tell. Aww. No more stories? What'll we do? We could eat something. You just ate, silly. Aww. Let's get out the bow and arrows and... No, no. Bad idea. Just sit there and we'll think of something. Anything but that. Excuse me, but I was just getting a work party together. Care to come? Hey, look. Raven! Hey, Raven, what's happening? Yeah, what you been up to? <clears throat> oh, you know, eating, sleeping, <laughs> tricking coyote. <laughs> oh, and lounging around. Wow. Hey, hey, tell us more about sleeping. <clears throat> I was organizing the beach earlier. Yeah, yeah, that's great, Baldy. Anyway, about eating. <laughs> Here you go, Baldy. Uh, mm. dum, da, dum, da, dum, dum, dum. Eagle. Oh, yes, little one? Eagle, what is a Baldy? Well, it's, uh, it means respected one. It denotes a certain level of maturity and community standing. Oh. Ha! It means he who is without hair, or in his case, feathers. Good try, Eagle. <laughs> Highly respected one. Raven, I... Hey, yeah, all the feathers on your head are different. How about that? Eagle is a baldy. Eagle is a baldy. Eagle is a baldy. <laughs> <laughs> mm. They said it, not me. Why is he a baldy? Uh... How about that, Baldy? Raven. Hey, yeah, how did you lose all your feathers, Eagle? Well... <laughs> Technically, I didn't... I didn't... See, they're just white and... So how did they get white? I mean, why are they white? Yeah, why? Well, because. Just because. Why because? Oh, um, it's a long story. Oh, good, a story. A story! Tell us a story. You have the speaking staff. Yeah, tell us about it. Come on. Please! <laughs> yes, do tell, Eagle. Plenty of time for stories. <clears throat> All right. I'll tell you a story of how I, Eagle, became... <clears throat> Bald. Uh, what was that? I said bald. Now this should be good. But you have to promise me to be quiet. <laughs> but of course, I was just... Please be quiet, Mr. Raven, so Eagle can tell his story. Ah. All right, sir. For you, I promise to be quiet. All right, then. This was in the time before time, in the world of shadow dreams, when the great spirit walked the world. And Raven and I were only young children like yourselves. Woo! <laughs>
eagle. Hey, look at me. Woohoo, look at me, eagle. Hey, hey, eagle, look at me. <laughs> now, in this time before time, there came a day when Raven and I were called on by the Great Spirit. Hello, Raven. Hello, Eagle, said the Great Spirit. Hello, Great Spirit, I said. How can we assist you? <laughs> hey, wait a second. I don't sound like that. I don't just jump around all over the place like that all the Shh. time. I this is my story, and I'll tell it how I want to. <clears throat> As I was saying, I asked the Great Spirit nicely, what can we do for you? Wait, what did the Great Spirit look like? Yeah, like a giant monster? Scary looking? Oh, no, children. The Great Spirit looked beautiful, ever-changing, as the Great Spirit is all things at all times. Water and air, earth and fire, life and death. The Great Spirit is a beautiful thing to see, a wonderful thing, like the wind, the sea, or the sky. Now, as the Great Spirit stood before us, Raven and I were asked, I need you to carry me across the world, as I wish to see all my creations. I, of course, stood ready and made sure that Raven did too. Hey, that's shh. <clears throat> as I was saying, we stood ready and the great spirit climbed onto our backs, one foot on each back. And we flew up above the world. We flew as high as we could, and the great spirit laughed with joy. <laughs> the world was new then. Everywhere we went, everything we saw was exciting. But soon, I grow thirsty. Take me to a lake so I may drink. So Raven and I drop down to a beautiful lake. tasted perfect. And then, the Great Spirit burped. Once I caught Raven. This time the Great Spirit was heavier, but with the both of us, we could still carry the weight. This will be a great world, a bright one too. Just you wait, Eagle. Just you wait, Raven. What plans I have for this place. It will be a place of life with blue skies and lakes of clear water. There will be animals of all kinds and people too. Wait till you see them. What plans? And you both are a part of those plans. And Raven and I were happy to know there were such plans and that we should be included just as you all are. All of us? All of you. Even me? Of course. We are all a part of the Great Spirit's plans. From the greatest mountain to the smallest pebble. Now listen. As we were flying, the Great Spirit's tummy rumbled. So Raven and I dropped down to a stream filled with fish.
and the great spirit ate of the fish there. And of course, as Raven is always hungry, he too ate along with the great spirit. I, of course, ate nothing, as I knew I still had flying to do. Now wait, just a sec there. Raven, this is my story, remember? Let Eagle tell his story already. I'm trying to eat here. All right, all right. Go on. As I was saying, soon they had both eaten so much they could hardly move. They decided to rest. As they rested, the great spirit looked around and wished to hear a story. Where is my storyteller? Where is Frog? I am here, great spirit. Always the sneak. Hey, Frog, the great spirit said. Only as you created me. Now, what story do you wish to hear? Surprise me. I'll tell you the story of how light will come into the world. Oh, yes. I have not heard this one. How does it go? It begins on a day much like this one, though it will be raining. And so Frog told her story while Raven and the Great Spirit rested and listened. Some parts of the story Frog told only to the Great Spirit. So Raven and I could not hear. Soon enough, the story was done and the Great Spirit stood up, yawned and stretched. I must see this place where the light is to come into the world. It seems I have great things to do. And the great spirit winked at Frog, and Frog winked back. So, again, I took the great spirit onto my back. But this time I had to carry Frog and Raven too, as Raven could no longer fly. He'd eaten too much, you know and Frog had to show the way. The load was very heavy, but I took them as I was told and did not complain. Wow, that must have been tough. Poor Eagle. Oh, please. Look, what really happened was... Raven, I'll bet you five fresh salmon. You can't stay quiet till the end of my story. Five fresh salmon? Make them slightly ripe and you're on. I can stay quiet. Just a bit of willpower is all. Anybody can do it. You'll see. I... Raven. Shh. Zip. All right, then. I had carried the great spirit, Raven and Frog, as ordered. And now we came to the place where the light would one day be released. You mean the place where Raven would steal the light? From the old man. Wow. Yes, yes, all very impressive. But this story has nothing to do with that one. As I was saying, now the great spirit turned to me and said, For carrying all my weight, I will give you this gift. A gift that you will carry forever, as will your children and their children. A gift of honor from the great spirit. The great spirit touched my head, and my feathers were turned white. So that is how I earned this great honor. That is what it means to be bald. And that is the end of my story. Cool! Can I touch your feathers? Of course. Actually... Wow, that was a very good story, Eagle. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for listening. Uh, can I talk now? Yes, and you'll get your salmon, just to give you a lesson in honor. Something you often lack. Now, if you will excuse me, children, Raven, I wish to speak to Koos, man to man, as it were. Hey, kids, psst, come here. Uncle Raven has a story, too. But you have to promise not to tell anyone you heard it from me. How does that sound? What 
is a raven? Some kind of secret? Oh, you could say that. Cool. A secret story? Shh. So that is how I earned this great honor. That. Now, children, listen. Let me tell you the real story of how Eagle was made bald. You mean Eagle lied? Well, no, not exactly, Za. Not a lie. Most of what Eagle told was, well, close enough. Oh. However, that last part, he touched my head, blah, 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 is a rubbish. Now, this is what really happened. Go back to... No, not that part. Back further, where we were flying. There. Now, as we flew along, Eagle grew more and more frustrated. Probably didn't help that I was saying things like, Giddy up, step on it, slowpoke, and so on. Still, what he did next was uncalled for. I mean, the great spirit in that was funny. Anyways, old Eagle there had flown all day. And soon he found he could hardly keep himself up. So with all my pestering and frog and great spirit laughing, well... And zoom, we fell down, tumbling to the world below. Didn't even have time to flap a wing. He really dropped you? Really? Yep, he dropped us all right. Just like that. Cool. Oh my, were you hurt? No, don't worry, when we hit the ground, we weren't hurt because, well, because we can't be. But the Great Spirit told us not to move. Shh, play dead. That way Eagle will come down here, the Great Spirit said. I have a plan. I like the sound of that. So I was still, and Frog, being sneaky, did so too. We even positioned ourselves to make it look bad. Eagle circled us for a long time, wondering if we had been killed. We stayed as the Great Spirit had told us, trying not to giggle. And eventually, Eagle dropped down to see just how dead we were. Boy, did he look sorry. Boo hoo, he cried. What have I done? Boo hoo. Talk about boring. Finally, after what must have been days of boohooing, he walked along the ground to Frog and said, I'm sorry, Frog, but your weight was too great. But oh, how I wish you were not dead. And Frog stayed perfectly still. You were my sister and I have killed you. Boo -hoo. Then he walked to me and said, Sorry, Raven, but you ate too much. I could carry you no longer. Oh, the guilt. Oh, woe is me. Oh, the guilt. And then he walked over to the Great Spirit. Oh, Great Spirit, I fear I have killed you. Oh, well, will I ever live now? Boo-hoo. And just as he spoke those words, the Great Spirit awoke and stood before Eagle. Eagle was surprised and tried to jump away. The Great Spirit just uh, laughed. And no matter how hard Eagle tried to free himself, the Great Spirit held on tight. The Great Spirit is very strong, but even so, Eagle was desperate to get away. Something had to give. Finally, Eagle did pull away, and in doing so, his head feathers had lost all their color. <laughs> so now Eagle was a baldy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but he didn't know it yet. What is it? Eagle asked. What are you laughing at? This, my brother. Oh my, said Eagle. My feathers. 
Look at my feathers. And the great spirit said, That is how you will look from now on, eagle, as will all your children, a reminder of how you drop the great spirit to the ground and how you lack any sense of humor. And so it is to this day. Eagle is bald. And yes, children, he still has no sense of humor. Pretty funny story, huh? <laughs> No sense of humor, huh? I can think of some pretty funny shapes I can make you into. See what I mean, kids? No sense of humor at all. Hey, kids, want to see how well Raven can swim? <laughs> no, wouldn't that be funny? 